three signals that clearly let you know you are making massive progress into the field of NLP, NLP skills and eventually hypnosis too, which are really pretty linked in the end. And how will you know when you get deeper into your understanding and mastery of this? The first one is the classical list of all the NLP presuppositions uh, that you can read out here. Uh, there are many different variations of those presuppositions. They are just the ones they noticed when Bender and Grinder have have been developing their skills and their craft and their mastery of this field that they were uh, creating back then. They have just noticed those are the attitudes of the most successful people they have been modeling. And the idea is that you are going to uh, consume and appropriate to yourself all of that up to the point where you don't need to think about it, you will trust your behaviors and your decisions will always go through those filters, even if you don't force it. Things like there is only feedback I have, I didn't fail, I, it was only a feedback. Many people know about that consciously, that they should be thinking in terms of feedback and not in terms of failures and expectations and commitment. Even if people know about that, I have seen so few people who actually apply it in real life. By applying, I mean that they legitimately from the inside feel like, no, I didn't fail, I just made a new attempt and that's okay, I'm gonna get it later. There's a difference between saying it just because you have read about it into an NLP book and, I, and you want to give a lecture. Oh, you know, you should not think about it in terms of failure. Yeah, you can say it, but what about yourself when you actually fail at something you were really expecting uh, that was really having some massive uh, importance in your life? Are you really able to feel like that? Like you can just let go of the pressure of, oh, I have failed on this again, or this didn't work. I was expecting that money so much or that person to come back to my life so much or whatever. This is a different level. And when you start uh, seeing yourself and uh, witnessing yourself changing to adopt more and more of those attitudes, behaviors, and the presuppositions based on, on the life problems you have, uh, seeing how you react differently to the problems you have, that's where you know you are really making progress. Uh, when people think they are stuck in the end, they are never really stuck. It is just that they did not learn yet how to improve on that condition. And the human mind and the human psyche and the human system is way more efficient and more malleable and adaptative, adaptable than what people think in general. So when you think you're stuck, you may have just not been learning yet the proper thing, the proper way to, uh, or to pass that problem. Maybe because there is too much emotional burden linked with the thing you have failed at or the thing you were expecting that you didn't get or you didn't get it as fast as you were expecting, whatever. Uh, or people have been blaming you, criticizing you and you don't know how to get past their criticism. Those things, they come with time when you uh, become uh, more advanced into NLP, you just adopt all those uh, ways of thinking and ways of letting go uh, intuitively. If you want to really surround around people who think like that, who are much more able than you may be right now at your level if you're not really that advanced, uh, you have a community down there in the description on the first link that you can join. You can join us and every uh, Thursday we have a call all together and we exchange on tips and tricks and there is a private lecture to help everybody uh, grasp more, much more things about NLP, to help develop their skills and to get into the career shift they want. That is really the best uh, value I could provide in terms of helping people to learn all those things more easily. The second thing uh, in terms of the signal that you are making progress is that you no longer blame or uh, criticize, you just see everything in terms of sensory-based outcomes. And sensory-based is very important, I'm going to get back on this and why it is so important. But basically, people who are in the blame frame where they want to find the fault, whose fault it is, uh, who is to blame, uh, why did you fail, why didn't you do this, why, uh, why am I not better right now, I should already be there. Instead of criticizing and blaming, when you're really intuitively, without thinking about it, it is automated unconscious competence, you are intuitively translating that frustration or those uh, worries into an outcome. Okay, this is fucked up, this is shit. Oh, fine, we know. What's the outcome? Where the fuck do we go from here? 
it is not it was not made it did not happen in the way we were expecting this somebody did not provide the results they promised they were uh, they would be providing but basically instead of blaming and finding oh this is this employee's fault this is my parents fault this is this per person's fault okay they, they are okay they, they are the problem yes okay you're right they are the problem what's the outcome instead of explaining for hours and hours why did they do this thing in a bad way what's the outcome from there because we cannot change the past now we need to get moving forward so you didn't like this thing from the past fine what's the outcome and what's the outcome again in sensory based language so what will you see what will you hear what will you feel eventually if you are in touch with your kinesthetics uh, or even just uh, if it is uh, an athletic skill you may uh, target really specifically what will you feel when you move correctly uh, by putting yourself in the shoes of somebody who is a master at that for example basically sensory based outcome because too many people set outcomes but they don't have they don't give their unconscious mind a powerful enough representation for their uh, nervous system to fire off all the resources to actually get there for example one thing i hear many times is i want to stop eating crap food or i want to stop eating uh, junk food or i want to stop cigarettes or whatever just i want to stop a bad habit we, are, we will use uh, junk food here which is a pretty common topic especially if you are a hypnotist um, uh, instead of saying i want to stop eating junk food which is just leading nowhere in terms of outcome you can translate that so what will you see what will you hear what will happen who will you be with when will this happen all of that uh, what will you be doing when will when this will be happening the translation is i am developing healthy ways to keep my mind and body busy in a good way when i am feeling bored because most of the time when people overeat is because they are bored they lack stimulation or they are worried eventually and they just eat to prevent the boredom or the, or the, the, um, the feeling of exhaustion because they are exhausted but they don't like feeling tired so they eat to prevent the feeling of fatigue to, to, set, uh, to come in or they are just annoyed and bored and they just eat to prevent the boredom so instead of saying I want to stop eating, which is just reinforcing the negative uh, uh, feeling you have linked with this problem, you can say what outcome, which new activities or ways of thinking can I develop to keep my mind busy in a healthy way. So not busy with another addiction, but busy in a healthy way by studying, maybe by playing some games that are good for my health, whatever it is. How can I find new games or new activities that are getting myself busy in a good way, in a healthy way, whenever I am being bored or exhausted or tired or anxious, whatever the cause is of your addiction uh, or your bad habit, what are good positive ways I can find for this? Translating a goal from I want to stop this shitty thing into I am developing the ways to X and Y uh, with things you can see and develop in here, that is just targeting your mind in the right direction and you will start spotting things in your environment you were not seeing before because now you have a clear direction. And this process is automatic. When you become uh, good at NLP, the same thing. You don't need to think about it. Your brain just makes it automatic. Whenever something bad happens, you solve it much more quickly than most people because your brain has already been trained to spot, to uh, think that way and therefore to spot the right resources around you or the right people you can ask uh, advice to, stuff like that. Another example is, uh, I don't want to suffer in relationships anymore. Uh, this was a client I had years ago, uh, a girl, she was always falling into shitty boyfriends and the first thing she said is, okay, my, my good New Year resolution uh, resolutions are, I don't want to suffer anymore uh, in relationships. And I said, that is a really shitty goal. The way you can translate that is, for example, the way we got to after I questioned her on what specifically fucked up with her past ex-boyfriends uh, was I am, so the right goal, I am communicating my boundaries more firmly, more thoroughly when I have a partner, an intimate partner, while questioning him more thoroughly about what he wants out of the relationship and developing the relationships uh, communication and developing her outcome based on that line of thoughts so i am developing my communication skills then she found all the answers and six months later it was not perfect but it was way better than it had been uh, back in the day before that phase so 
When you can translate all those emotional garbage of I hate these people or this is those people false, oh those Democrats again, oh the Republicans, oh Joe Biden, no Donald Trump, no Barack Obama, everybody's fucked up anyway, okay? So what is the outcome you have out of this? They are fucked up, they are making the world miserable, we know. What can you do out of this? What is the outcome you have out of this? Once you can get to this way of thinking, many paths, uh, paths will open up to you because you won't be trapped anymore in negative thinking. And the third one, which was kind of expressed into the other uh, ideas presented here, is to always develop more than two choices. The idea behind that is that when you have one choice in life, it is not really a choice because you only have one option. So it is not a choice, it is an obligation. When you have two options or two choices, you are in a dilemma a Dilemma because you have either one way or the other, uh, you can go in one direction or the other. It can be very uh, difficult sometimes because you may have inner conflicts, uh, you may not be sure about which one to choose, difficult. When you start having three choices, so more than two, when you start having three choices, you start becoming a human being who can think uh, for himself or herself and you stop being a robot. You stop being a machine, you start being a human being because human beings have way more potential than they think. Uh, specifically, if you have been growing up with school and teachers telling you you are a sh piece of shit because you didn't get good grades, even worse. So when you can develop this ability to think with multiple choices and open up new choices every time you are stuck somewhere, then your brain will just fire off so many more resources uh, than you thought were possible based on the topic you were dealing with. So every time something doesn't work, uh, the basic phrase from Bandler was do, so do anything else. Every time one thing did not provide the results you were expecting, do anything else. Because, specifically, anything else is more likely to work than something that did not work the first time. That doesn't mean, though, that when something hasn't been working the first time, you need to completely drop the goal you had with this thing and just get into a new goal that has nothing to do with it and, a new, and, and when the same thing, when this new thing doesn't provide the results you were expecting, shifting again, it's not about that, but it's about changing your approach, changing the way you are approaching the things you are attempting within the same field. So if you're into the field, if you're right now into a phase of losing weight because you're overweight, or if you're right now into a phase of uh, um, getting more sleep because you are underslept, you are uh, uh, maybe insomniac, you haven't been able to sleep properly in the last few months, uh, then how many more methods can you find to tweak your sleep? If you have just been trying two methods and they did not work, obviously it is not providing many results and there are not many chances uh, those two only will work. But also what can happen is that every time you try something new, you don't get the results but you are accumulating experience. And all those accumulated experiences or what gives you the massive results at the end, the massive results that may happen in the blink of an eye right away. And people tend to um, then say that, oh, this thing they did is the one thing that everybody should do, specifically with diets, uh, people who have been losing weight in one shot with one diet, and then they, then they preach that this diet is the, the right one for everyone. Maybe yes, maybe no, because maybe they have been losing a lot of weight because they had already been trying uh, like a fifth, 15 different diets over the course of the past three years and after three years yes just whatever you do is already working even if it is really simple because you have been accumulating over three years many experiences and all, all of them are building up the foundation that give you the massive results later so if you are just stuck with one or two choices obviously you're not going to go really far when you start developing many more choices then you start getting the, the highest results because all of those choices accumulate even the ones that did not work or did not provide results they just build up your intuition your your muscle memory, your everything that, that has to to your system, to how you are going to uh, get success later. All of those things are just helping your system to make better decisions down the road. If you have trouble to articulate all of that by yourself, if it is still too confusing, or if you uh, don't make the progress you want to make or you hope to make, then you can join us in the community down below. It is called the NLP Next Generation Community, where I gather bright minds and people who can help all help each other 
together and we grow together and we have a call every uh, once per week and we exchange the tips and tricks, the wins, the discoveries of everybody. And whenever you have questions, you can ask them there during those calls and we will answer them no problem.